Hey guys, today we're going to be air layering some Japanese maples. If you're not familiar with that technique, that's where you make an exact clone of the tree that you're air layering. Uh, so in this case, we're going to be air layering some Japanese maples. There's one behind me uh, and have a clone copy of it by the end of the day at the end when you go take it off and it's nearly free. Yep. And so we're taking a little break from our DIY garden shed build uh, in order to do this because this is the perfect time of year to air layer. So we're going to be taking turns going back and forth, uh, just showing you exactly what we're doing. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this video. There's a lot to it. We hope you stick around. Yeah, let's get started with us, Amber Ghost. Okay. All right, so before we get to the actual air layering, I wanted to mention some of the tools that you'll need for air layering itself. So what we have here is a blade of some sort. So I have a box cutter with a brand new blade on it or a pocket knife that has kind of a curved edge to it. Um, and I have some rubbing alcohol and some paper towels to rub on the blades just so in case we're going from tree to tree, we're not spreading disease if some tree happens to have disease. Hopefully it doesn't. Um, next is we have uh, some just some pruners just to prune away any other little branches that might be near the air layer that you need to get off of there. Um, we have for the air layering itself time, we have sphagnum peat moss. And uh, a lot of these things we've purchased from Amazon, and we'll put a link down in the description so you can find a lot of these tools and these consumables. So sphagnum peat moss, um, this is for what the roots go into instead of like a dirt um, sort of material. This is antibacterial and will help with the root growth. Um, that you'll be putting into a bucket of water and um, wringing it out. Uh, to wrap the air layer itself, we like to use this like packing a roll here or any sort of plastic. We have some thick mill plastic over here. Um, anything will do. Um, also to cover the whole air layer, aluminum foil that helps discourage some critters. And lastly, electrical tape. Actually not lastly, rooting hormone. <laughs> so we have some rooting hormone um, that is to help encourage the roots and wrapping the whole thing with electrical tape. So uh, we have all our tools that we need. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is start soaking our sphagnum moss. So sphagnum moss, it comes kind of uh, condensed. So you want to use some, but not too much to start out with. But you want to make sure you have enough. Uh, you can keep sphagnum moss for years, as long as it's dehydrated like this. At least that's been my experience. Um, so I'm just putting it in there, and I'm pushing my hand into it to really get it saturated. So this will take a while for it to really get saturated but you want to go ahead and start it before you start anything else. So it's ready when you need it. Um, and I know that kind of looks like a lot, but I always like to do a little bit more. All right, that looks like a whole bunch, but uh, this is probably just enough for this one air layer, which isn't that large. Okay, so now we have our sphagnum moss, it's soaking. So the next thing is to find our air layer. Uh, so there's a few things here that we want to look at. Um, so, you want to always get your rubbing alcohol, or you could just use a dis disinfectant wipe. I tend to prefer rubbing alcohol. Be sure you don't get it in your fan to where you're hurt. All right, so rubbing alcohol, I'm just going to disinfect our blade. And what this is doing is just if we used it on any tree in the past uh, that was diseased, this is trying to just get rid of that disease before we actually cut into the tree. Um, this is a good practice in general whenever you're pruning. So I have that. I'm going to try to put it, hopefully not, on something. And I have my knife, I already have it out just so I can disinfect it as well. So I'm just kind of just wiping it, making sure it's good. And then we're going to go like this. Uh, if you were, by the way, I know this is air layering. If you're grafting, you can also use the, the rubbing alcohol, maybe a little bit diluted on the branch itself. Uh, however, in this case, it's usually not needed. And it tends to discolor the bark as well for rubbing alcohol and dries it out. Um, so for now, we're not going to do that. So first, I'm going to give myself some breathing room. So this is the branch here, and if you want to back up, you could show them. Uh, this is the branch here that we're going to try to remove. I'll shake it, so hopefully you're able to see which one it is. It's this one right here. Uh, so this tree, we kind of wanted to have more of an upright growth. This is a great branch, and it would be a shame just to cut it off. So we're going to do an air layer so we can make it into its own tree. Uh, so, But first, there's a few things here. Like there's this branch right above my head. This is clearly not coming in. Uh, it's been more than a month. It's about two months since this tree leafed out. So this isn't going to be in here. So I'm going to just give myself breathing room and cut it off. Same thing for this branch here. It doesn't look like it has any growth. So I'm going to cut it off too. You want to be careful when you're doing this. Don't go too fast because uh, 
you don't want to accidentally cut one you don't want to cut. Also, if you're noticing when I'm cutting this, I'm cutting them at an angle rather than flat. I know it might be hard to see, uh, but I'm doing this angle on purpose uh, so that uh, water, when it comes down, can run off of it easier rather than settling into it. Uh, so this just help with other things. So other thing you'll see here, there's a branch right here that's coming out of the middle. I have two main leading branches, and then there's this middle one here. This is another one that I'll be air layering off after this. one. Uh, this is just a poor placement of it. It's going to be a weak one. And because it's mostly covered by the canopy, it's probably going to be pruned off by the tree anyway. That's what's happening with a lot of these branches is they're getting uh, shaded out. And so the tree is just deciding it doesn't want those branches anymore. And this is just true for some trees. Some Japanese maples will have different habits. Uh, and so some will keep all their interior branching while others uh, like this amber ghost will want to leave, will want to lose some of its interior branching. Um, so anyway, that's what you want to look out for. So let's go ahead and start this air layer. So right now I'm going to put the air layer about right here. So here, I'll show you. This is a nice clean area. I'm going to go for this, this area right around here that's nice and flat because I kind of want this higher up. Wherever you do your air layer, that's where your roots start. So you want to make sure that it has enough space above it uh, that it'll look decent. So some of the things I noticed right away, some of the things I won't need, like this branch here is going to be too close to it. Now, if you were grafting, you could try to do this at a time when you can graft. This isn't the time to do grafts. So I'm just going to get rid of that branch right there. The rest of the branches will probably be okay. Uh, and so I'm just going to leave them. I'd rather prune it later after it's its own tree than beforehand. Uh, however, if you need more room to work, then go ahead and prune off any branches or little twigs that are in the way. So now let's start to air layer. All right, so I have my new knife and what I'm gonna do is I want to have about an inch space here. So what we wanna do, and you can see I kind of started it here, is you wanna take your knife and go around it first. And what we're doing is we're cutting through the bark, essentially. So you wanna go around it all the way around and this is where a curved blade comes in handy. Again, if you had a straight blade, it's not that much harder. I've used a straight blade for years using a box cutter. All right, so then you go about an inch down and you do the same thing. You wanna go around it. You don't wanna to cut too deep. I'm not putting much pressure on it all. I'm just putting enough to where it cut, cuts to the bark and that's about it. Ideally, you wanna do this after the leaves have also leafed out. You make sure they're hardened off and that way you have sap flowing which is what makes this a lot easier. So now I've cut, I've, I'm scoring along it. Don't be too afraid to hurt it. And then it should just come off. But here, I'll try to just do it in your direction. So see, it'll come right off. And that's what we want to see. That tells you, and there you go. This is what it looks like. That tells you that you have sap flowing and this is the right time to do it. If this is really hard to remove, uh, you can still do it, but this is the best time is when it comes off nice and easy. All right, so we've removed the first part bit of it. However, there's more to do. So the next layer, you can't actually see it, but it's called the cambium layer. If you don't remove this, it won't take. So what I'm going to do is just start scraping it back. And you want to scrape it back all the way around the tree. And once you do this, this is permanent but you want to scrape away this cambium layer. Don't be afraid about going too deep. If it's a really small, thin branch, this, this it gets a little bit dicey, but don't worry about it. It'll be fine. And so I'm just scraping it back on all the sides. And I actually can't see it on your side, so I'm going to come up here so I can see it. It's really hard to tell where you've scraped or not, so I usually end up going over it two or three times just to make sure, because if, if you don't scrape this away, it's not going to take. The cambium layer isn't too thick. It's just a very bit on the surface. And if you notice, I'm, I'm swiping away from the front of this cut that we made, back towards the parent tree. And the reason is that the roots are going to form right here. They're going to come from here and they're going to come out. The roots don't form here. They form up here. Now, while I'm doing this, I have a chance to actually tell you what's going on. So what's happening here, the energy from the tree the roots provide nutrients to the tree through the inner part of it. However, the leaves give energy back. They give energy back by going back through the actual cambium layer. So by striking off this cambium layer, we're stopping that flow of energy. 
And what will happen is it will want to create roots where it is because it wants to store that energy somewhere. And this is all about photosynthesis and all that sort of fun stuff. So we probably have, we're probably good now. I'm just going to make sure. And if you have a utility knife, don't even be afraid to cut into it. Um, it's not the worst to cut into it. You can even like cut into it a little bit to make sure that you're getting the cambium layer. Don't go too deep, but you can go a little ways in. But ideally, you just scrape it away. That's the easiest. And you really want to get it right at that front. The front edge. And there's no huge rush on this. You probably want to get the whole air layer done, I would say, in about 10 minutes. But you don't have to get it done immediately. Okay. So I'm going to say that we're good. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is put plastic around here. I find that's easier to do now, and then we'll do rooting more right in a second. So, I'm going to get something in my thick bag. This is going to be a fairly large air layer. Uh, it's not that large. I'm just going to use one of these. This is a little shopping bag. So I have a shopping bag here. I'm going to cut off the end of it because I don't really need all that. So here, I've, I've cut it off, so now it's just a bag. And then you have to cut one side of it, kind of like this. So I'm cutting one side of it and then cutting into the middle. It's about like that. So now you have a bag that's kind of separated. So you can start to put that around here, just like this. Okay. And then what we're going to do is take our electrical tape that we have here and start to wrap it to get that to start. Okay, so we have our plastic bag ready to go. We have it cut away. The next thing you do is start some electrical tape to tape it off. What I like to do is I'll start on the tree itself. If you're not used to electrical tape, you want to start it here. You pull it around and then you pull at it and put some real strength on it. And that's where you're going to start to get some ability for it to grab. So here, I'm going to try. This always gets a little weird when you start to do all this, but try to get it around here. So you can see here, we have a little bit. So I'm going to start to walk my way up it while pulling on the tape. And we're trying to make it a nice, good seal. And now I'm going to walk my way back. And again, I'm putting some nice, good pressure on this tape, I'm pulling at it to make sure it's tight. At the end, go ahead and just tie it onto itself. So I just pushed it back on itself. So that way, there's a little tap that you can pull for later. You'll want that later. Next thing you want, I usually, what I usually do, just for ease, I'll pull off another piece of tape and I'll put it on the plastic itself. So you can see that this plastic is overlapping. I probably don't need it to be as large as it is. This will be fine. So I'm going to go up here, and it really likes to stick to plastic, this tape. So what I want to do is start it probably around here. That's what I was seeing. Get this in there, and then come up it. Now that's just to hold it there for now. That's not our permanent. That's just to get it started. So that kind of gives us an idea of what that'll be like. So this kind of starts the whole thing. I might put one more piece of tape on there just to hold it. And again, that's just to hold it together. Okay, so you have your bag and you have your air layer that started. Next thing I'll do is I'll dip my hand in here to get this water. I remember this should have been a clean bucket and clean water. I'm just going to put a little bit of water on this. And the reason I'm doing that is that I'm about to put rooting hormone on it. So now I have my rooting hormone uh, right here. Ideally, I have dry hands now. I got to dry off my hand. And then you put a little bit on here. You can use a brush. You can use a painting brush for this. You can use a whole lot of things. What I usually do is I just put a little bit out into the cap, just like that. And then you just put it mostly at the base of it. And again, this might work better with a brush. I have lost my brush. 
and the roots are going to mostly come out of this very front area. Now this step you could actually skip. It's going to make the roots regardless of if it has radiant hormone or not. Uh, but the general consensus is it's no real harm in using this. Okay, so that's about it. That's about how much rooting hormone you need. Some people also will mix this into a paste with a little bit of water and then put it on there, and that works just fine as well. Okay, so now comes the interesting part where we get to do sphagnum moss. Okay, so you want to pull this back out where you have a lot of room, as much as you can get. You take your sphagnum moss, you take a good handful of it, and then you squeeze it. So you want the step magnum moss uh, to be just wet enough. You don't want it to be sopping. This is plenty. And then you start to just force it in there. And right now at the beginning, it's not going to look like, like it's not very tight. At the end, we want it to be super tight. So I'm going to grab more sphagnum moss. But you'll lose some. You put more in there. And this is where your roots are going to grow. So you want to give it a good bit of room. So I know that looks like it's a fair amount. It needs more. I'm really putting some force on this. Okay. And you want even more. So then what you want to do is make sure that it goes all the way around the tree. And you really want to push this in there. So you want it about like that. And we're not going to worry too much about this yet. I'm going to twist this a little bit here. And then I got to get my electrical tape. I'm going to do the same thing where I work my way away from it. So I'm going to come over here, start on this side. It's a little wet, so it may not stick as well. So I'm going on the plastic. And electrical tape loves to stick to itself. So I start it there. I got a couple branches here that I didn't remove. I could have removed these, but I'm just going to go right past them and back around. And now this is tight here. I really want it to be tight a little further up. But first, we're going to do the trick that really helps. Okay, so this is the part that really, really helps. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cut this a little bit because I would like it to be a clean start. If that kind of works at all. There we go. All right, so this is packing material. This is what you would use to pack boxes, anything like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start it here, just because this is the way right-handed-ish. And you just got to get it started first. And you want it evenly placed around there. There we go. And the idea here is you want this sphagnum moss really tight around the air layer. And I'm going to even go the other way. And there's that. So some people don't do this part. You could even just do this with just, just do the aluminum foil and you might be fine. But the tighter this is, there. So then I'm gonna just tighten it, make sure it's tight around there and you should be pretty good. Now I don't really want bugs going up in here or up in here. So now what I'm going to do is get more electrical tape and go around it even further down. Again, we're going to be cutting off this branch. So if it discolors the branch, we're okay. But don't put the electrical tape where you don't want discoloring. 
There you go. Nice and tight there. And then we'll do the other side. And we'll work our way down. And what this is going to do is it'll keep the bugs out. And then the last step, last step is to put some aluminum foil on here. It likes to fall apart. You want to do shiny side out. Uh, supposedly, I think that helps with keeping the heat away, though obviously this is very shaded anyway here. But it also keeps the birds away. It might, some people say it keeps the, uh, the bugs away. It'll keep the squirrels away. So you just want to wrap it with aluminum foil. I kind of, I don't know, they see their reflection, something about that. It just gives a little bit of protection. So now we have our aluminum foil in here. There is one thing I like to do. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to put a little bit of tape on here, just right here. This is not on the branch itself. It's just on the aluminum foil. And that just keeps any bugs out, especially uh, bugs that really like to be on it are weevils. They'll be especially prone to get in there. Um, and so if you're, if you have an area that has that, just go around here. And then another thing that you can do, if you didn't have, if you didn't have this, another thing you can do instead is just use electrical tape. So you can just go like this with your electrical tape and go around it and put a lot of pressure on it. And there you go. And that'll hold it just as well. So now we're finished. That's it. We're done. In about four to eight weeks, you want to come over and take off this branch. You can take off the aluminum foil first and see if you see any roots. Um, that's why if you can, you want to use a clear plastic uh, so you can see through to see the roots. That's the only real reason to use clear. Um, so this is it. We're done. Four to eight weeks, you come and take them off. And we'll show you what some air layers look like uh, that have already been taken off and are in the pot. All right, so these are our air layers that we did. These are obviously not Japanese maples. These are camellias, but you can do the same thing for camellias. Uh, these we took off the parent tree last fall, and so now this is the following spring. So these we could take and plant in the yard by now. Um, what we did when we took these off of the plant is that we very carefully didn't disturb the root ball at all. These are actually from my mom's yard, and so we carefully loaded them into the car and brought them here. And so what we did is that we prepped the pots by uh, putting like dirt in the pots. You wouldn't be able to see it here, but we put dirt in the pots and kind of like spread it around an area for the size of the root ball just to kind of set in there. We put these poles in all the way through the pot, busted a hole through this plastic pot all the way into the ground. So this is nice and stable. So that way this was all prepped, ready to go when we brought the air layer in. So we unwrapped the roots and so you kind of had this beautiful little ball of sphagnum peat moss with the roots which are very delicate and you just place it in here and kind of gently cover with the dirt and attach the tree or in this case the camellia to the pole that's nice and stable so the idea is that it really isn't moving around at all it's that those little very fragile roots aren't being disturbed whatsoever so again, this was, we took this off of the plant last fall and now this following spring, um, since hopefully it's gotten its roots into the soil of the pot, then we can then transfer it into the yard. All right, so another candidate we have for air layering is this Jordan Japanese maple that we have right here. Uh, we kind of like the upright shape and this branch down here, I'll shake it a little bit so you can see it right here, is just coming out from the bottom right here and we just rather have a more upright shape. Also, these two branches are kind of competing with each other. You can kind of see if I pull this one down, this is a branch that's coming out here, which is a nice shape. So this one is just, they're just kind of competing with each other. And rather than pruning it off, why not air layer is our philosophy. So I'm gonna come way down here. And you can kind of see this nice, big clean area that we'll air layer off, probably right around this area. Hey guys, we thought we would quickly go through this as it's similar to what we've done before. In this case, since Anna had such a big air layer that she was making, she decided to start with putting the plastic on first rather than later. So here she's securing it. Once it is secure, she has it to where she can easily put things in and then cleans her tools with rubbing alcohol. After that, she's making the first cuts. She's going around the outside for the bark at the top and then at the bottom. 
Once that's done, she's digging into the side of it, just barely cutting into it to be able to remove that bark. This does happen fairly easily. If the sap is flowing, you'll find that this is much easier than you expect it to be. Here's on the other side. You can see a lower cut uh, further down. Uh, she decided her bottom cut wasn't a very clean cut. It was a little bit raggedy. Uh, so she decided to go ahead and cut it a little bit lower. Uh, if ideally you do want a very clean cut on especially the top, but the bottom as well. Once that's done, she's scraping away the cambium layer of the tree. Okay, now that we're done with that step, on to adding the uh, rooting hormone. And so I've already taken the liberty to make a paste ahead of time. So it's just rooting hormone with a little bit of water. Um, and you could use a paintbrush for this, but I don't have one right now. So I'm just going to use my finger. And so what I'm going to do is kind of spread it, focusing more along this top edge here as much as possible. I'll put it on the whole thing, but um, focusing on the top edge because that's where the roots will come from is this top, top edge. Oh, and another thing about rooting hormone is that you kind of want to have a fresh um, container. So try to have one that you've ordered for your next batch of um, air layering or whatever you need it for, uh, because it can kind of expire a little bit or just not be as effective if it's several years old. All right, so what I'm doing here with the sphagnum moss is that it's been soaking, it's hydrating a lot in this bucket here with clean water, clean bucket. And what I'm going to do is my very, very best to squeeze as much water as I can. I'm mean, gonna have to do several of these because it's just kind of falling out of my hands as I'm doing this, but squeeze as much moisture out of this as possible for the roots. Because you want it damp, moist, not sopping wet. And remember, this is what your roots will be. So the bigger the root, the bigger the amount of bag of moss, the bigger the area for the root to grow in. And for a tree branch this size, I would say we need a pretty large root fall. This is probably going to take both of us. I think I need another set of hands to help me out with this. So uh, I'll check in with you once we're uh, getting closer to this being finished. <laughs> All right, Spencer's holding this uh, on for me right now, or I'm going to try to tape it. Um, it's just super precarious, so we'll see how this goes. All right, so since this isn't as tight and as firm as I'd like it to be, I'm going to add the furniture packing uh, plastic to kind of hold it together a little bit better. All right, so Spencer is going to help me hold this up while I add this furniture packing plastic around this whole thing to help compress the sphagnum moss and make sure it's coming in contact with the area that we cut on this branch. And so a lot of times what happens with these air layers is that you're picking a branch that's very close to another branch and that's why you want to get rid of it essentially or prune it off. And so that just makes it really hard to get anything that you need to wrap around the whole thing uh, successfully around the root ball. Since I can't get um, some of this plastic wrap around this bottom side, just for a little bit more support, I'm going to add another little bit of electrical tape. All right, we're going to have a fun time getting this off later. Next step is I'm going to add electrical tape around the top edge here and we have moisture inside of our sphagnum moss here, but we don't want to introduce any more moisture from rain kind of trickling down this branch into here. Um, don't know quite why that's a thing, but that was a thing. Uh, definitely is that you don't want new water to come in contact with it. So I'm just sealing this up. Also, it helps prevent bugs from marching in there and making a nice little home in your sphagnum moss and eating your nice brand new little roots. I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom side. That's not so much for rain as it is just for the bugs. 
and we're getting a little close to the actual main part of the trunk of the tree. I would rather it not have been like this close. This is the way it ended up. All right, now that we've got our sphagnum moss wrapped in plastic, wrapped in plastic again, electrical tape, more electrical tape, more electrical tape, time for aluminum foil. I'm going to go with the shiny side out. I know cooking, it doesn't matter if it's matte or shiny, but this, I think the shiny is kind of helps to prevent uh, critters from getting in there. I think especially like squirrels and birds, they don't seem like they want to really do any damage. It's just more like they're curious about what is this thing. Just like us, like when you plant a new plant in a pot, they immediately go digging in it to investigate what's happening. I guess the same theory there. I don't know. So um, this is also to help shade the roots. So yes, there is shade from the tree itself, but sunlight on those delicate roots, if they do come to the surface and they can be seen through here, um, this just helps out a little bit. This plastic that we have here is a little bit more opaque, this kind of like creamy white plastic, um, maybe not as needed with that. But if we had super clear plastic that we we're wrapping in, maybe just with this plastic wrap, you definitely want to use this aluminum foil. Best place to get aluminum foil? You think I would say Amazon and put a link in the description, but actually Costco. They have these super wide, long uh, sheets of aluminum foil. Um, someone else who was teaching us air layering said that he, he was doing much smaller air layers. And so they also sell individual uh, pieces of aluminum foil that are pre-cut into squares. He likes to use those. I like to use uh, just the sheet kind because you can just wrap however much you need and our air layers tend to be gigantic so i'm going to add some uh, tape at the top and bottom just to help keep weevils out or any curious critters that might want to rip at this aluminum foil mainly just to kind of keep the foil on and so since I kind of had two pieces of aluminum foil that I used for this, there's kind of like a bit of it flapping up. So I'm just going to do one wrap around the center to help secure it. All right, and there you have it, an air layer. Uh, we could remove this anywhere from four to eight weeks, but we tend to err on the longer side and give it more time to develop roots. So we, uh, we like to err on the eight week side of things. It's early May right now, so that would mean early July, which is pretty dang hot. So I guess it's also, you have just to look at how scorching is your summer. And if you think that uh, your plants will struggle, if it's just like, if you're like in the middle of a drought or something, it's just being difficult condition. All right, so that's our Jordan Japanese maple air layer and our amber ghost. That's right. So those both have been air layered now. Uh, we hope this gives you a good idea of how to set up an air layer for your own trees. Um, a few things that we did want to point out. Uh, the first is if your air layer doesn't take, not all do. Uh, maybe three out of four take uh, for us. Uh, so it's not always 100% success ratio. If it doesn't work, and the way you know it doesn't work is when you open it up, there aren't any roots there. Yeah. Uh, if the... Or a bunch of bugs. Surprise. Yeah, that bugs. can happen. <laughs> it's a pinata full of bugs. Um, so if that happens, uh, what you want to do is you can just start over. As long as the branch is still alive, which means it still has leaves, you can just go a little bit higher and start a whole new air layer again. Uh, just go another inch up and start over and give it another eight weeks. And you can even continue us through the year to the next year to the following year. Um, some air layers just take longer. So if you're air layering a conifer, for example, it's not uncommon for the air layer to take uh, even two to three seasons to fully form roots. Uh, so that means that you set it up, let's say, by June of one year, then maybe the following June the next year it's ready to take off or even the year after that. And what you do is you just keep checking it. Just keep looking on looking into it, uh, take away uh, the plastic a little bit so you can see what's going on. Once you find out there aren't roots there yet, just wrap it back up as long as it's still moist in there and you shouldn't have a problem. If it is dry in there, that means you didn't really seal it well enough and you should go ahead and redo the whole air layer. And actually those camellia air layers that we showed you earlier, those were from a tree or a, a bush, well, I guess it's a tree, that we didn't see them. We took all the other air layers off and we missed them. So right. when we went back to air layer again off of the same bush. The next year. The next year, we we're like, oh, here's some from last year that we missed. So we took them off. They were viable and there they were. In, in yeah. The plant and they took. 
Uh, uh, something else I'd like to mention is that if uh, we have this big, big air layer right here that we did from this Jordan, um, that's quite a large air layer. That's a big, giant, gigantic branch. So for that, if um, you take it off, you have the viable roots and you might just look at it and be like, you know, that's an awfully small root ball for all that canopy. Right. So you might need to prune off some of the branches just to so it survives. Just right. Because that, um, that little amount of roots is supporting all of that canopy. And when she's saying cut it off, you just snip it off. Just snip off the top third or so of the of the branch, and that's fine. Just just take off some prune, prune it, it. Strategic, strategically. Yeah, you can make it look nice. <laughs> uh, but you don't always have to do that. If this one grows the root ball about the size of a group uh, of a, uh, I guess a melon of some sort. Uh, if it actually gets filled with roots there, that's enough to support this entire branch. It'll be perfectly fine. Um, the other thing is when you put it into the pot, uh, make sure that you already have a stake going through into the ground. You just gently put the root ball into it, and then you tie the actual branch itself to that pole. Yeah, uh, this is a situation where you do not disturb the roots. Unlike right. if you have a potted plant from a nursery or something, you want to tease the roots and make sure they're nice and loose. Right. This, you do not do that. You don't touch them. You just They're going to be kind of clumpy, and uh, we'll show you some photos of what they look like. Uh, those are good. Don't mess with them. Don't touch them. They're very gentle. Uh, they're very uh, delicate. So just be very delicate with them. Put them in. Put some soil over it. Gently water and you should be good. And just like any Japanese maple, you want to water it in a pot about every two to three days. You don't want to be too frequent unless it's over 90 degrees in temperature Fahrenheit. Uh, if it's cooler than that, every two to three days is just fine. You also want to put the air layer, set it up in a shaded spot, no matter what your zone. You want to make sure that you put that pot that you're putting it into in a mostly shaded area so that maybe it gets morning sun, maybe late afternoon sun, but morning sun, afternoon shade is best and really one to two hours of morning sun, and that's about it. And I'd like to also to add, explaining like the cool thing of how this works completely. And so when you cut off, when you're making the air layer itself, you're cutting those two rings across uh, the, the cambium layer. And what is going on here is that all the nutrients and water can go up and feed that branch, but because you've cut that cambium layer, it can't go down. The, the branch back the energy down. can't go back the energy down. can't go back down so that's why it hits that top edge that you cut and that's when it starts putting out those those roots and so that's how the branch is surviving is that it's basically a symbiote at this point like kind of like a parasite almost on its own parent tree in a way i guess that's right. not quite the right terms but it's still being fed by the parent tree and when anything comes back down it hits that stopping point and, and goes out and grows branches and makes, makes roots makes roots so that's the, that's the cool thing that's happening there and yeah super neat it is really neat um so that's it there's not too much to it uh, one note about uh air layers specifically to japanese maples um so a lot of people do air layers for japanese maples for bonsai it's a very accepted technique however uh, typically, people graft onto a Acer palmatum rootstock, which is a green Japanese maple. They normally do that because it's a more vigorous grower. And so the rootstock is the, the that's literally, when we say rootstock, it's the roots, and then it's grafted on, and then from up, up from that is the rest of the tree. That's the specific cultivar. Uh, every cultivar is not necessarily good on its own roots. Uh, some of those might be like Sengokaku. We've had, we have five air layers from it. They're all doing well, but one is starting to have problems. Uh, they're a little bit more prone to getting sick. So some, like, uh, if you air layer a Siriu, I bet it's going to be fine. That is a very vigorous grower. Uh, but if you already have a delicate kind of Japanese maple, don't expect the roots to necessarily hold up. However, if it's pruning off the branch or making an air layer and having a second tree, I say give the second tree a try. Well, and what's nice for bonsai is for air layers is that you don't have that graft point. So That's if right. they don't really like a grafted tree because you'll see that nubby graft point, they don't like seeing that. But right. an air layer, you're not going to see that. So, yay. Right. Okay. And it may take several years after you cut it off the tree before you start to see any kind of root flare. So don't be concerned about that at the first. Um, I think those are all the main things. It's something that we really enjoy. It gives us more trees to either put in our landscape or give to others. Uh, it's really no harm. Uh, you can reuse the sphagnum moss if it comes out later. Uh, you can reuse it. I don't think we've ever been able to do that. We have though. some. I have, have I have a little bit over that I'm going to reuse uh, okay. today, but, but mostly mostly it's used up. <laughs> uh, but it makes it a very inexpensive way to extend your garden without spending too much more. 
Um, it does take a little bit of time. It takes a season. Once you get it off the plant, you do put it into the ground, like we were saying, and you let that go over fall, over the winter, and into the next spring. And then you can plant it just before it starts to leaf out. Sometimes you may want to leave it, if it has a very small root ball, you may want to even leave it in the pot for another following year until the following fall. Yep, so I think that's about it. We appreciate you watching. Uh, please like and subscribe if you want to hear more about more gardening stuff or follow along with our DIY garden shed that we've been building. Um, we have other projects yeah. coming down the, down the line too. <laughs> uh, we have a lot that we'll be doing to our landscaping and we have a lot that we'll be doing to our house to bring a real modern feel to it. So everybody, thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe, leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you and we'll see you next time. Thanks.